Hello. Um, so my name is Paul Rouget. Uh, as you can hear, I'm, uh, I'm French. I'm from France. And I work for Mozilla. And my job is to develop this software. You probably heard about it. It's Firefox. Uh, I used to be the HTML5 evangelist. Uh, now I'm working on more uh, code stuff, whatever. And still, today I'm here to talk about uh, HTML5 in France. So this is the, the way to say HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, and all the things. And the title of my presentation is Intelligent Client Side. So what does this mean? What does Intelligent Client Side mean? So um, first, quick reminder, what we call the client side it's what's happening inside your browser. That could be Firefox, Safari, Opera, Google Chrome, or even IE. Or also all the browser you're gonna find on your phones, right? So this is the client side. So what does make the web awesome? So I would say it's mostly about the giant thing that's happening uh, with all the big wireframes, these big servers doing computations, bringing people together, connecting people together, computing data, processing data. This whole thing is making the web, making the web very powerful. And most of this stuff, and, and these things are PHP, are Ruby, are all these database, it's all this stuff you can gonna find client uh, server side. All these things are just about servers. So let me picture the web this way. The web is mostly about uh, a lot of mechanisms happening in the server, right? And, and today, with the new technologies, we're we, we understanding that a lot of things could happen on the client side, in the browser side. So what you see of the web today, you see it through a web browser. But most of the magic happens server-side. And I believe, and a lot of people believe, that the magic of the web should, could, can, must happen client-side in the browser. And, and this is what I want to show you today. So this talk is a bit special. I'm not going to to spend an hour explaining you how to use this JavaScript API, or how to use this video tag, or how to use this CSS3 property. Well, this is, these are things you can learn just by reading documentation, okay? My goal today is to show you that what you can do client-side is just mind-blowing, really. So basically, I'm gonna show you stuff. I want to impress you. I want to make you feel excited about what's happening uh, in the client side. I want you guys to think very hard when you're going to build the next your next application or your next website. I want you guys to think very a lot about which technology you, you want to use and where you want to build the logic, the intelligence in your application. So to make you feel excited, uh, I came with 20 demos. So uh, basically, it's going to be an hour just full of demos. And I'm going to explain you how these things work. So it's going to be a little tricky uh, because, well, as a speaker, if there's something you learn, it's to do not do live demos, never. And I come today with 20 live demos. So it's going to be a kind of risky. Uh, and I use uh, a Firefox, my pink Firefox, uh, which is uh, a nightly build with the latest technologies of in HTML5 technologies inside. So, yeah, so we're gonna go through these 20 demos uh, all together. Uh, feel free to ask questions uh, during the talk. You don't have to wait the end uh, because we're gonna jump from different topics really fast. So if there's something you need more details or you don't understand at all, feel free to ask me. Um, and yeah, so, so let's start. So the first three demos are going to be about beauty uh, because 
the first thing the user see is the web page and, and, and he wants something beautiful, something sexy, something colorful. And, and for that, we have a lot of technologies. Um, so the first one you can think about is obviously CSS. And, and CSS3 comes with uh, a couple of interesting features. Um, the most famous one is probably the animations. It's the ability to define animations with CSS. So you, want, you can say, I want this image to go there following this transformation, for example. We have keyframes and things like that. This is supported by Firefox and WebKit-based browser like Chrome and Safari. Okay, the resolution. So, um, so this is a wall animation. Most of the parts of this animation are images. And, and the wall thing has been uh, coded with, with CSS. There's no JavaScript involved here. So may, may, maybe it reminds you something like Flash, right? Well, here that's a big difference. The first one is, this is working on my mobile phone. The second one is that there's a good fallback in case the browser doesn't support animations, right? So if, if the browser somehow can't render this thing, we have nice fallback. And in this case, it's just a story with images. So it's more accessible, better fallback, and it works on mobile. So this is CSS3. And this is the big thing with CSS3, it's animations. And, and a subset of, of, of these animations um, is called transitions. Transformations, sorry. Transformations and transitions. So here we have another demo. And I like this demo because it's going to show you um, how you can visualize data, how you can have some educational tools just inside web pages. So, this is mostly based on trans CSS, trans um, CSS transitions for CSS transformations. So transition and transformations. Let's look at the demo. So it's kind of dark. Sorry for that. So here what you can see, it's, uh, it's the solar system. On the left, you have the, an image. On the right, you have a little animation. You can see um, the different moons of Jupiter here. And what's interesting is that you can browse the world system. And look, take a look at the details. It's all about the details here. Look at the animation, what's going to happen uh, for these animations on the right. You have these nice little things happening. And, 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 and look, you see this, this graphic in the middle? Look how the graphic is built. So, I'm going to do it twice. First, the first one. So I, I go back, see what's built. You have the different layers coming like that. And if I do that, it's coming from the top. So it's all these little, little details that make your, your application very sexy, very beautiful. So this is a way to, to draw interesting things on the screen. There's another way, which is much more, um, it's different. It's named WebGL. So what is WebGL? So first you have to uh, understand what OpenGL is. You probably heard about it. It's basically the API which is on top of the driver of your graphic card. And, 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 and this API has a subset named OpenGL ES, which is uh, basically um, the minimum um, you need, I mean, the, the, the strict minimum you need to implement uh, if you want to support this thing for mobile and stuff like that. And, and, and WebGL is a binding between OpenGL ES and JavaScript. And so basically you can talk to the driver of the graphic card with JavaScript. Let me show you what you can do. So you're gonna see a lot of demos using this technology. So it's beautiful, right? 
Um, so you have access to shaders, you have access to the whole OpenGLS ES, ES API. Well, um, I was saying, okay, I want to show you something. I was not supposed to show, show it to you now, but I think it's the right time, actually. Let's try something. Wait a minute. Um, because I know it's going to... Okay, good. So, the important thing about all the things I'm talking about right now is that these are web standards. So, what does this mean? It means that if you build a browser, you're supposed to support this stuff. I mean, it's your job to support this stuff. And also, what's interesting with the, the, the web standard is that it's supposed to work everywhere, right? So, it's also working here. So, I'm going to show you. I have a webcam here. Uh, I'm going to show you. So, this is. So, we are working on Firefox for Android as well. So, I'm going to show you my webcam and, and Firefox on the webcam. So, well, this is Firefox. I can't really use it uh, because I need my hands. Well, whatever. Uh, but what I want to show you is that, I mean, what I want to try to show you is that this is the 3D thing. This is working as well on, on a web page on a mobile phone, right? If I do that, whoa. So, don't forget that. What you're seeing right now, it's, it's a web page, okay? It is a web page with some JavaScript. So this is, this is what makes, okay, let's switch off my face. So this is what makes these, these things very important because you understand now that if you uh, invest in these technologies, in theory, if everything goes as the plan, according to the plan, uh, you're supposed to have all this technology available all around the world in all the devices, in all the vendors. This is going to work with Firefox, of course, uh, Chrome, of course, Safari, Opera as well. Question. Yep. So what you show uh, on the uh, mobile device is running WebGL. But uh, from my previous experience, uh, the uh, Firefox on mobile device showing WebGL is quite slow. So you have some hardware acceleration right now? So, so, so yes, so this is uh, WebGL render by, by Firefox and Android, yes. So. My question is that from my, my, my previous experience running uh, WebGL on Firefox mobile the device is quite slow. So, so actually not, it's not slow at all. The thing is not, so okay. Uh, fair question. Um, no, it's not slow. It's not slow because the GPU is fast enough to render um, a certain amount of things. What is slow is JavaScript. Uh, it can slow down your, your animation. So the thing is, the demo you saw right now on, on my desktop computer is not working well on mobile, as you can imagine, because it's, it's, it's a lot of CPU-intensive algorithm, right? So when you're going to develop for mobile, you're going to have to, uh, to, f to have a different way to, to build your animation. Uh, it's t you can still use WebGL, but maybe you can't use the same shaders. Maybe you can't use the same, uh, the same algorithm to, to uh, render your scene, for example. So, so yes, it's slower than desktop for sure. But still, you can do things. And I'm going to show more stuff. And actually, it's, it's fast enough to render uh, animations, normal animations. Uh, but you can't do the same thing as you can do on the desktop, right? And this is normal. Just it's how it works. The CPUs are different and, and the way it's done. But WebGL itself is not too slow. It's more about the processing. And I would say, actually, the thing is that JavaScript is not that slow uh, because we have the JIT and all the things that make JavaScript very, very fast. I think to make sure that WebGL animation like this one could work uh, smoothly on these kind of devices, um, the developers have to, uh, the developers, the web developers, and also the vendor, the browser developers like us, they, we need to understand uh, how this world works because it's a brand new world for us, okay, WebGL 3D in the browser. So 
the web developer needs to understand how to, to write efficient animations because most of web, the web developer come from a world where performance are important but not that important. Uh, if your code is tracing or not, you don't really care usually when you just do some dumb manipulations. When you start building a, a, scene, gra a scene graph, you have to really, really care about the performance. And the web developer needs to understand how to make sure that his code is tracing. Tracing means that uh, it's going to be compiled and not interpreted by the browser. And we have to come with tools, you know, to, to measure this performance. So, so you're right. Right now, if you want to write a basic animation, it's kind of, it can be slow if you don't use the right tools. Like, for example, for this kind of animation, you need to use something named request animation frames. That it's a scheduler, animation scheduler, that's going to tell your JavaScript code how to draw your, your scene. So, yeah, so we have to learn how these things work. We have to build libraries, performance libraries. There's one well known named 3GS you can use, like this animation use 3 3GS, which is good enough. Okay. Oh, I should go way faster. So, the video tag, um, you've heard about it, right? Uh, we can have HTML5 video uh, inside a web page, and the codec use usually are WebM or H264. Uh, uh, and well, okay, so we have a web page, um, a, a, a video inside a web page. So what's the big deal about this? The big deal is that as soon as as soon as you have access to the video inside a web page, uh, the, the, the video the, the video is is seen by the web page the same way an image is seen. It means that you can use a video. Uh, with the canvas element, for example. So here we're going to have a little demo. Uh, so here you have the video. Um, but actually what you see right here is not a video. It's a canvas element. Uh, the video is hidden with CSS. And basically we, we copy the frames of the video uh, inside the canvas. And when you can do that, you can create effects like this one. Right? These are things you can do. You can manipulate the video. Uh, I've been working on the face, face recognition algorithm with OpenCV for, for JavaScript videos. Some people are doing crazy stuff with the video, doing like movement, movement, a movement tracker, uh, doing crazy stuff. You have access to, 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 to the video and do, basic, and do basically whatever you want. And, and look at this one. This is something we did. Um, uh, last year. So, well, you see the video, and I guess you all know what I'm going to do right now. Uh, I'm going to play with, with, with the pixel of this video. So, basically, we have the video, we have canvas, we have access to the pixel. Well, the other thing is that JavaScript is damn fast now. It's kind of crazy how fast it goes. Uh, because, well, it's not interpreted anymore. It's compiled. So it goes very, very fast. So what you can do is stuff like that. So don't forget, this is a web page, OK? We are in, doing augmented reality inside a web page. It's not Flash. It's JavaScript. And, and the story of this code is actually very interesting. Uh, in the first place, it was a Java code that was used for desktop applications. Then someone ported this code to ActionScript, which is Flash, to do augmented reality with Flash. And we ported this library to JavaScript. So it shows you what we can do today. We can have a native application that was this, this R tool. And with it, what we were able to do with this application, now we can do it inside, inside a web page. <laughs> of course, we can do games, right? Um, just think about Canvas. Canvas allows you to draw 2D stuff on the screen. Um, WebGR is 3D. Canvas is 2D. And, and, and obviously, the first thing you want to do is to build this kind of game.
So this kind of thing works on, on mobile as well. So you can imagine building this kind of things on the phone and have an example if the Wi-Fi is working. Mm. Okay, so the web page is loading. I'm going to show you when, when it's loaded. So you can build games. Um, well, you all know Angry Bird, right? You probably saw the demo before. Uh, uh, so this is a, I think it's a pretty interesting achievement, right? Uh, we managed to have this, 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 this well-known, famous game working on the web page. Um, Okay, so we have to go through the animation. So th there's different version of this game. Uh, there's one with full canvas, one with WebGL, uh, to see the different, you know, performance uh, possibilities here. And well, you know, it's just working. And I'm so damn good. So yeah, so we can build games. And this is, thank you. <laughs> we can build games. A and this is, uh, I think this is awesome proof that we can really use the web HTML5 to build games. It's even working on IE. What's not gonna work on IE, it's something like that. It's a game based, uh, on WebGL. So this is not a real game, it's just a prototype. So you have this well, this beautiful object uh, inside the web page, okay? And with some JavaScript events, I can just, you know, drive this car. So what is the future of the games, right? Uh, we could Totally imagine now that you don't even have to download a game just to log, you can log in the website and you could have um, an MMO game or whatever. Uh, it's possible uh, in theory because it's the very beginning of these technologies uh, and some browsers don't support the technologies yet. But at least it's something we can uh, start thinking about. WebGL. In the case, the case, of, in the case of Canvas, Canvas is all, even working on, on IE. Well, there's another thing. Um, having videos, Canvas, WebGL, it's good. Um, there's also audio APIs. Let me explain you the audio APIs very quickly. So basically, uh, we have the audio tag like, that allows you to have, uh, to what just happened? Okay, just a crash. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Firefox nicely built. Oh no, what happened? Wait a minute. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, let's do that again. So we're saying that um, we have the audio tag that allows you to have music, right? The audio API is a JavaScript layer that's gonna give you more information. So basically, you can have the real-time uh, samples being played. So the, the temporal spectrum, right? You can have this information. So you can also change. Uh, the audio. Uh, I don't have sound anymore. Do I? Okay. And we can calculate the Fourier transformation in JavaScript as well. And as soon as you can do that, well, it gets crazy because you can do whatever you want. You can have a big detector. You can have nice visualization of what's happening. And well, you can do crazy stuff. And with Canvas visualization, or even if you prefer some 3D visualization. Well, that's cool. Let's let's uh, let's try to uh, be a go a, a bit further with with the visualization. 
So this is WebGL plus, plus Audio API. I'm sorry, it's a bit dark, but you're going to see something soon. Uh, I'm just going to play this song for 30 seconds. Okay, just enjoy. Don't forget that that was a web page with some JavaScript, no, a lot of JavaScript, some HTML and the audio tag. So um, the next thing is, is actually the story of this demo is, is really awesome. So eSpeak is a C code. It's, it's, it's a program you can compile on your Linux machine that do uh, text to speech. And someone built the compiler that compiled the C code to JavaScript. Well, this is possible because, first, JavaScript is fast enough now to do that, to execute this kind of code. And the second thing is, it's possible because we have type arrays. It's basically, um, JavaScript is fast, but the data containers was not designed to be performant. So we came with the type arrays, which are very um, it's, it's a type, just type arrays, okay? It's like uh, uh, JavaScript, there's no type in JavaScript, you know? And here you can say, okay, I want just arrays of integers. So it's much faster. So, so with this kind of container, we can build uh, powerful WebGL animations. So you need to use that for your WebGL animation. You can build powerful tools like this one. And we're going to see more because we have file management where you have need type arrays and stuff like that. And, 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 and here we can execute uh, this code uh, inside a web page. And, and I'm not going to write that. I'm going to write something else. Uh, and then, or not. Do we have sound? Mm, let's do it again. OK, it's not working. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, never. Oh, interesting. Uh, why is it not working? Believe me, it used to work. Um, so let me try something. Are we sure we have sound? <laughs> we do. Hmm, I don't like that. Oh, I think I know. I think I know. Oh, I, you yeah. know, whatever. Okay. Well, believe me, it used to work. <laughs> uh, I, I think I know. It's, 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 uh, well, I hope the other demos are going to work. Whatever. Um, we can try later with another version of Firefox. Um, OK, real time. So this is an exception, an exception in my demos. Uh, it's not something I'm going to show you live, because I just can't. Because this time, there's some service code involved. So real time, we have this technology, WebSockets. You've probably heard about it. It's basic. I, I would call that IP over HTTP. It's not really true, because it's not exactly that. But basically, you open a connection, a socket, with a server. Then you can talk to the server. The server can talk to you. The connection is never closed. Um, so it's much more efficient than any, any XML HTTP request. Um, it's, it's, it's like, basically, you have, it's, it's an IP connection, which is open with some HTTP stuff uh, before, closed with some HTTP stuff. So you can do, uh, you can connect a browser to, to a server. In the future, we're working on that. We want to be able to connect uh, a browser to another one, peer-to-peer. -peer. So uh, of course, what you can do with this, the first thing you think about is uh, this kind of thing. Basically, here you 
had um, different players uh, playing at the same time on this same game, uh, sharing enemies, sharing, you know, all the things. Um, another demo made by Google, it's um, WebGL animation synchronized with WebSockets. So you're going to see different, uh, different screens. There are different computers, actually. And all these animations are synchronized with, with, with WebSockets. Okay. I have to go a bit faster. Okay. The other thing I want to show you, it's this. So, like I told you, I, I was loading a game uh, on my phone. So this is a canvas game, and it's going to be very hard, very hard for me to play the game because I'm supposed to be in front of my phone, not behind it. So, okay. So I'm supposed to jump. Yeah. Okay. I tried. <laughs> okay, so basically you have this little um, canvas game. Well, well, I'm going to give you the links of all these demos at the end of the, of the talk. So you could build games with, with, uh, with the web technologies, even on mobile. And this is working on iPhone. It's working, I mean, the WebKit on iPhone, WebKit on Android, Firefox on Android. Uh, well. Um, the other demo I want to talk about, the, the other technology I want to talk about is, is um, file manipulation, the file API. So the file API is, is an API, thank you, uh, that allows you to, um, to do stuff with, with a file. So first, where the file come from? So in the web page, actually, you handle files. When someone drag and drop a file to your web page, you have a file object. When someone use the input type file uh, in, in the web page, you have a file object as well. And then what you can do, it's, fir it's first um, uh, have a preview of this file inside your web page. And also what you can do, and this is actually awesome, you can read the, f the content of the file. You can go through the binary content of the file. We have the type arrays, like allows you to have access to um, a good format. You know, you can just go through the bytes with this, and well, do whatever you want. So now I have a question for you. Do you know uh, what's special about uh, JPEG files? What's inside the JPEG files besides the actual image? Do you know? There's something na named the EXIF data. It's like metadata inside the JPEG file itself. So um, what I'm going to do here is to drag and drop. So I need to launch Nautilus. My desktop doesn't have icons. OK, so I'm going to drag and drop this file on my web page. You're going to have a preview of the, of, of, of the, the image. And again, there's no uh, server side code involved. Preview of the preview of the of the file. I go through the content of the file. Okay, so I find some exit data, the description, uh, the, what kind of camera has been used, blah 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 blah. And also, you know what's interesting? The exit data. You have the GPS coordinates. So what you can do is to you know, guess where the photo has been taken. And you can zoom, 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 and actually the photo has been taken right here. If I'm not mistaken, this is an island, and here you have this island, right? So here, beside requesting the map, map to Google with the right coordinates, there's, not, there's just some JavaScript code, right? So I've been through the content of the, 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 the file. Okay. The cloud. So this demo is not graphic. So it's not impressive or anything like that. But I believe this is the most important technology right now uh, because it's even supported by, by IE. And I believe this is crucial. We need to use this today. 
so let me explain you. Um, so I'm going to explain the demo a bit later. Um, today, maybe you don't know that. If you're not working on, on, on uh, the client side of a web page, you probably don't know that. But basically, uh, let's imagine I have my website, foo.com, OK? And I have some JavaScript file, uh, JavaScript code being executed. If I want to talk to Google, if I want to talk to Facebook, if I want to talk to Twitter, to whoever, I just can't. It's not allowed. There's a restriction. You can do something else. You can use something, a hack, I would call that a hack, named JSONP, where you heard about it. It's very limited. But basically, you can't talk to, to, to a remote server. You can't uh, really uh, take advantage of APIs. Let me give you an example. GitHub, you, you, you know GitHub, right? GitHub has an API. And this API allows you to do a lot of things. You can't just commit code directly through the API. You can load files. You can send files. You can do whatever you want with your project. They have an API for that. And, and, and you can use this API th from any server code, you know. But you can't use it from a web page because it's not allowed. Actually, this is not true. Why? Because GitHub did something awesome. Uh, this is. This is not. This hasn't been announced yet, but uh, it's working. Um, they implement the calls headers. So basically, it's a couple of HTTP headers saying that I allow this domain or all the domain to talk to me. And then, from a web page, from some JavaScript code, I'm going to have on my own domain. I can talk to GitHub. So basically, what does it, this mean? It means that you can write some JavaScript code, client side that can talk to GitHub. So let me show you how I, I, I developed, how I wrote these slides. I've been working on, on, on this, uh, well, so this is my, 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 my code editor. Uh, it's um, it's um, just a code editor, client side. It's JavaScript uh, and stuff like that. And everything is synced with, with GitHub. All the things I'm doing are logged inside Twitter. I can commit code from my web page. And I just need to log in uh, there. And, and I have an IDE inside a web page. And here, from my point of view, there's no server side code involved at all. Just my JavaScript code is talking to GitHub. That is all. So, what does it, this mean? Why is it that important? It means that you can bring the cloud from the server side to the client side directly. Right? So you could imagine, like, uh, while well, doing stuff like that easily without, here you don't have, I don't have to host any server side code. Everything is just a simple HTML file and a couple of JavaScript. So that makes a lot of sense for web applications. Because web applications, you know, are supposed to be standalone and could take advantage of all the ser existing services. So you can start building apps, application, with no server-side code at all. It's what I'm doing all day long. The code I'm writing, the code I'm writing never involved server-side code, never. There's other interesting services open with the course headers, uh, like Imageo, for example, that allows you to to upload images uh, without any uh, server side code. It's quite awesome. Data visualization, I just wanted to show you this one because it's just a little WebGL demo where you see um, 3D and uh, it's loading. And not working. Oh, yes, it is. So here's data visu visualization. Uh, you can see a different earthquake. And if I'm not mistaken, here you have a list. Like we can do that. And yeah, it's a way to you know show uh, data in an amazing way. Uh, I love it. And you have some special views like this one, which is kind of slow. It takes time to to show the animation, but basically you s you see the Earth and it's zooming to to uh, a part of the planet and show you the the earthquake. 
but it's, it, it takes time, so I'm not sure I'm going to, yeah, whatever. Okay. So this stuff can be used, this, this, this WebGL and, and, and fast JavaScript can be used to, to, to build tools, mathematical tools, like, uh, like this little thing is, is very interesting. A lot of people are playing with this. It's uh, simulating fluid and water and stuff like that. And yeah, raindrops, medium. So again, this is JavaScript doing all the work of the simulation. Uh, there are probably some shaders involved. Uh, not sure about this. But so this is a good preview of what you could do. But this guy did something awesome. It, it did this demo. Very uh, so it. We we're talking about it two weeks ago or last week. Uh, hmm. So, well, this is just you know. <laughs> some water being simulated. Uh, and this is actually extremely CPU intensive. But it's working. And, and I don't know if you know how this stuff works, but believe me, this is hard to do. And, and, and being able to do that with JavaScript is a big victory, really. Uh, so you have a ray tracer um, and stuff I don't understand, like analytic ambient occlusion. I don't know. Whatever. Okay. So the two last demos I want to show you uh, are huge. Um, it's not web, there's no WebGL, no 3D or anything like that. Uh, it's mostly all about JavaScript and how fast JavaScript can be. So it's emulators. Um, I'm not going to name them. Uh, going to ask you to guess. Well, the first one is quite easy to, to, uh, okay, oh, it's loading. Okay, there's a lot of data to load. Uh, go, 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 okay. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. okay. You know what, I'm going to launch another Firefox. I don't know why this is not working. Fuck. Oh, okay. <laughs> Have you heard about that? <laughs> okay. This is a Game Boy emulator. Oh, there's no sound. That's weird. There's supposed to be sound. Okay, I don't know. Whatever. Um, this is a Game Boy emulator, right? Yeah, I know. Okay, let me just, okay. Shh. I have to focus. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's, let's try again, okay? Sorry for that. I mean, I used to be an expert, believe me. <laughs> okay, no, that's for just to, to, to show you how not to do it, okay? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Hopla. Okay, let's go now. <laughs> Not bad. Okay, so the next one is, I love it. Uh, I'm gonna go full screen, then you're gonna see, not gonna see the URL. I hope you're gonna be able to see something. Yeah, okay. So just guess what's happening right now. It's a Linux booting in, in, in JavaScript. Uh, so basically you have a processor being emulated. Uh, the guy behind this is Fabrice Bellard is the French guy well known for FFmpeg and uh, QEMU and this thing. 
So here, uh, I'm going to do something because I think it's just awesome. I'm going to use VI, write some code, and compile the code. Oh. Or not? OK. I don't see anything. I don't know if you can. Float labor. <laughs> I don't see what I'm typing. <laughs> I just. Okay. Okay. Uh, hello. I'm supposed to have a return here. If I'm not mistaken. Okay, so we have this, this little compiler named t Tiny CC. Okay, it's compiling and it's executing. So I just build a software <laughs> in JavaScript. I mean, I, I open VI, write some C code, and and compile the code inside a web page. Oh, crazy that, right? And this is Linux running here. Uh, I don't know the version of Linux. It's 2.6.20. How old is this one? <laughs> Whatever. So this is a Linux running in, in, in a web page. Um, and, okay. I don't know what's I don't okay. Oh. Well, okay, that was 20 demos, 22 actually. Uh, we talked about HTML5, CSS3, animation, the video tag, the audio element, the audio API, Canvas, WebGL, uh, the fast JavaScript engine, type arrays, and calls, and stuff like that. Um, you're going to find all the documentation about the things on developer.mozilla.org, okay? Um, if you want to have a link to all my demos, it's right there. Uh, is the GD poll demos? Okay. Um, so I was supposed to talk about mobile. I was supposed to show you the 3D thing now and show you the game now. Uh, I have some other demos, but we're winning a bit out of time, I think. Let's just skip this part. Um, so thank you, everybody. Uh, and if you have questions, it's the right time. <laughs> Um, Paul, I have a question. Um, can you comment a bit about um, Mozilla's uh, audio data API and Chrome's, um, yeah. Can you comment a bit about um, Mozilla's audio data API? Can you comment about uh, Mozilla's audio data API and the web audio API, how, how does it like progress? Which will take like center stage? I don't know. I don't know. No. So you're talking about the two APIs, existing APIs right now? Um, there's one from Google and one from us. Uh, so, so what you have to understand is that these APIs are experimental, the, the audio one especially. There's a working group working on these APIs. So, so let me just explain you something because it's some, it's, uh, people don't really understand that. How does a standard works? Uh, how does it work? Um, it's not like you don't have a, a, um, the W3C writing a standard, then browser implementing the standard, then user using the standard. It's not working this way. It's more like a magic triangle. Um, we are, uh, the, the vendor, I mean, the, the, the guys behind the browser experiment something, then the user maybe you're going to use this thing like the audio API or more recently the request animation frame API. And then we have feedback and then maybe we're going to build a, a, a group to work on this, this API. And so we have all these three groups working together. Um, 
So Google came with another kind of API for WebKit, uh, but now we have a working group, uh, which is led by, uh, I don't know his real name, well, Flictor. Uh, uh, and, and, um, and we have this group who's going to work on, who's gonna work on, on, on a better API. It's probably going to be a mix of both of them. I don't know yet. Um, but we need to define the things. We need to, uh, to, write, uh, to write a document, uh, the W3C document about this. We already have some drafts, but we have to just come to an agreement what, what we want to do. But we'll see. We'll see. But it's still an experimental API. Uh, in my experience, uh, JavaScript program is very hard to debugging. And which debugging tool you use when you develop your JavaScript program? And uh, uh, how you use it? Can you speak a bit louder? You're saying that it's hard to debug JavaScript, is what you're yes, saying? Uh, such as uh, Mozilla Firefox or other tools. Uh, which tools do you use to debug your JavaScript program? So, um, what kind of tool you can use to debug JavaScript? Um, you have different kinds of tools. You have this one. Uh, you have the console, the JavaScript console that allows you to do like normal debugging. But uh, but you have Firebug. You probably know about Firebug. Uh, you have you have the the Web Inspector tools from Chrome. Uh, at Mozilla, we're working on a new set of tools as well. Um, we're working on the JavaScript debugger. Uh, it's not ready yet, uh, but work in progress. And what we need, I think, in, in the future is, is um, a tool to debug the performance of JavaScript. Uh, because today, so we've, we've been building um, CPU intensive demos lately. A and to make sure that your code is, 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 is being um, correctly used by the browser, you have to do some special debugging. Uh, special performance debugging. And, and there's no tools to do that yet. Uh, we understand we need that, especially with all the WebGL things coming. We need high performance uh, JavaScript, so we need tools that are going to tell you this part of the code is not fast enough and can be faster. We have some stuff like that. We have some, some little prototypes of, 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 of debugging tools. You have to build Firefox yourself. It's not it's not something you want to use, believe me. But uh, we have stuff coming, and, and the goal is going to be able to tell you this code is not fast enough and can be faster. Yeah, in your last demo, you show uh, running on Linux uh, locally in a browser. So is that uh, really a Linux kernel downloaded somewhere and run locally, or you so connect to somewhere remote? I'm going to show you. So what's happening is, uh, let me, how do I zoom? Um, oh, okay. okay, thank you. Um, let me just uh, try to do something. Give me just a minute. Uh, can you see some? Oh, that, that's awesome. Okay, so, so that what's happening is that you just have, um, you know, um, the binary code being downloaded by the web page. Okay, this is going to be better. Um, Okay, so this is this is what's inside my my what's being downloaded by the web page. Uh, you have the the, the Linux uh, the root dot bin like usual, the VM Linux uh, dot bin as usual. Uh, you have Linux start dot bin. I don't know what this is, uh, and you have a terminal emulator here, term .js. Uh, you have um, the CPU x86 emulator. 
and other stuff at uh, like uh, GS Linux. I don't know what this is, but whatever. So yeah, so the X86 X, uh, code is being downloaded uh, by JavaScript and then being uh, executed by the JavaScript code. That's all. Does it mean the JavaScript uh, really interpret the, the instructions and uh, somehow convert back to machine code again and run? So, uh, so I don't know the details, but um, I think you ha I mean I don't know the details. I mean I'm not in the head of of, of this guy, but basically you, you have the memory inside. I mean I think he's allocating some memory and then just you know implementing the CPU emulator. And and it's not translate. I mean, it's translating this code. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. That this guy right here is going to tell you how it works. Yeah, because uh, running <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> in JavaScript is still something that's not. But so it's we're not talking directly to the CPU. You know, it's just we, we don't need that. We're not executing the, the, the Linux binary code in the CPU itself. Just there's an emulator. Uh, Paul. Um, recently, uh, actually several months ago, Microsoft claimed that OpenGL have some kind of security issues. So what do you think about this and uh, what might be the issue, uh, what might be the solution for this issue? Thank you. Okay, so the thing is like, uh, yeah, maybe two months ago, uh, actually we heard about these issues much before um, the, 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 the Microsoft uh, thing. So the story is, uh, Web WebGL 1.0 has been uh, has been released. I don't know three months ago, something like that. And and with buggy driver, uh, if if your drivers are buggy, uh, it's possible somehow to uh, extract the content. Uh, I mean, you have a, you ha there's a security issue that would allow you to have access to remote content. Um, so this has been fixed. Uh, with the cause, uh, the cause headers, uh, it's been fixed in Firefox 6, if I remember correctly. Uh, so, so the issue is fixed. Um, but this is actually this is this is an interesting topic. Uh, we are bringing 3D to the web. So basically, what we're doing is to allow anybody to write code that's going to be executed by the GPU, and and GPU are very very sensitive, uh, and, and drivers are extremely buggy. So uh, we have to deal with that. So if you if you try Firefox today uh, on your computer or, or Chrome uh, with WebGL activated, uh, I mean with WebG with a WebGL capable browser, you're going to see that more or less 50, 60, only 50, 60 percent of the computer are going to work because we are disabling uh, some some drivers because we know they're buggy and or because the graphic card is not supported or stuff like that. So. Bringing such a feature in the web, 3D, it's 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 it's, it's risky. Uh, we know that, uh, but we fixed this problem in Firefox 6, uh, 6. and but you know it's it's the challenge. You know we're trying, uh, but today there's no non-security issue anymore. Uh, but anybody bringing 3D into the web gonna have the same problem. Microsoft is saying WebGL is has a security issue, but they have this security issue with Silverlight as well. So it's more like FUD than anything else, or whatever. Why is Microsoft right? Yep. Um, Google have released a sandbox for Chrome that can run C++ oh. other code on its sandbox. But um, recently, we think about uh, web browsers should be cross-platform, and we have IE already at there. And now uh, Google released this um, sandbox. What did you comment about this? Can you say that again, please? It's uh, can, can we turn on the sound more because it's very low here? Uh, uh, we like to have a cross-browser JavaScript things, but now Google released the sandbox that you can run C++ on it. Oh, okay, so native. Okay, okay, the native thing. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I understand. Um, well, if you want to do something cross-browser, don't use it. Just that's all. Uh, it's not. It's not working everywhere. It's not a standard yet. Uh, maybe they're working on it. Uh, I don't know. Um, well, I think I think now with the technology we have, like WebGL and JavaScript, we don't need that. Uh, I believe it's enough. I don't think we are doing anything in this area. 
uh, we don't want that, I think. Um, but yeah, don't use it if you want to do something cross-platform. And, and well, the problem today is uh, when you want to build something new like that, you have to deal with uh, all browser. Like I, I mean, it's kind of hard to explain, but um, depending on what you're doing, and depending on your audience. There are things you can do, things you, things you can't do. If you have to support i6, I mean, this is not even, I mean, you can't do that at all. None of these demos gonna work, right? Um, but you can think about doing progressive enhancements and, and, and have a minimum for, uh, maybe your audience are not going to use i6, maybe it's gonna be like just i9, I hope for you. It's i9, maybe i8, or whatever. But here, this is important. There are things you can use today, and it's going to work everywhere because there's good fallbacks, because there's good um, uh, degradation mechanisms. Uh, it's Canvas. You can use today Canvas everywhere, even in i6, I think. If there's something named X Canvas that emulates Canvas inside i. Um, JavaScript is working. You can use JavaScript. It's not fast everywhere. Uh, well, it's not fast in, in old browser, but it's not fast on mobile neither, right? So uh, you have to deal with this. So when you're building these apps, you have to, uh, to understand who is your audience, what you can do, what you can't do. Uh, also, these things are very new, and it's more about experimenting with these new features for the future than building actual apps today. Um, but if you're if you can say, okay, most of my people are gonna use Chrome or Safari or Firefox or are willing to use this kind of, of browser, you can start using crazy stuff like, like this, these things. Uh, of course, when there's one feature that is supported only by one browser, it's kind of hard, like the native client thing. Thank you. Thank you. 